I found an example implementation of a Linux container. I couldn't locate the exact origin of this example, but I first found it in this talk by Liz Rice and later I also found an almost exactly the same example in this article by Julian Friedman. This example is quite popular on the internet, but I suspect either Liz or Julian are the original authors. The code we're going to go through is a sort of mashup between the two, which I edited a tiny bit. I'm gonna go over this code pretty quickly, but if you're interested in the details, I recommend you check out both of these sources. I'll put the link to them in the description. Okay, first, if you don't know what I'm referring to as containers, I basically mean Docker. And if you don't know what Docker is, it's a tool which allows you to create environments that seem like like they are completely isolated from the host. Think virtual machine, but containers are a lot more lightweight and they don't abstract away at the same level as virtual machines. For example, a container still uses the same kernel as the host and it runs on the same architecture, whereas the VM can abstract both of these. Here, for example, is how you set up a simple container with Docker. This command created a container with the Alpine Linux image and then ran the shell in it. You can see that the prompt has changed. Now if I cut out the OS release file inside the container, you can see that while we're still in this shell, all programs think that they're actually running on an Alpi Linux machine. Alright, now let's look at the example I mentioned. Let me just scroll through the file first. And yeah, that's literally everything there is to it. Now obviously, if it was that simple, Docker wouldn't need to exist, but this example still illustrates a few important concepts. The most important concept of all when it comes to containers is namespaces. The article I mentioned earlier lists all namespaces that Linux provides. We have the PID, MNT, NET, UTS, IPC and user namespaces. We're just gonna use a couple of these namespaces but again if you want to learn more I recommend that you read the article. The namespaces we're gonna use are the PID namespace which isolates processes and for processes inside this namespace it assigns new PIDs. Then we're gonna use MNT namespace which provides the processes its own mount table and the last namespace we're gonna use is the UTS namespace which basically provides the processes its own host name. Back in our example. The first thing we do is we check the first argument passed in at the command line. If this argument is run we run the parent function and if the argument is this child with two leading underscores we run the child function. When we're going to invoke the container we're always going to pass the run argument and then the name of the program we're gonna execute like this. Moving down to the parent function, the first thing we do is we execute this weird program, which is a special way of saying execute the same thing as I'm running. So when this executes, it's essentially gonna run the same code as we're running currently. The only difference is that instead of using the run flag, we're passing it the child flag with the leading underscores as the first argument. We're also passing through all the rest of the arguments we received from the command line to this subprocess. And just to make sure we're on the same page, if the original command we ran looked like this, then this child command basically looks like this. The most important thing, however, is that before running the child command, we set the clone flags of the sysproc attributes. These flags are basically saying create a new UTS, new PID, and new MNT namespaces for the process. Then we just connect the standard streams so we'll see the output from the child command. And finally, we just run it. By the way, this must function here is just a convenience wrapper for checking errors. So here is this run command that was to return an error, this must function with panic. Now, this is somewhat okay for this example, but if I see anyone doing this in anything other than a simple example, I'm gonna make sure Santa doesn't bring you any gifts this year. Seriously, don't do this. Handle errors correctly. Moving on. So as we run a second instance of this program as a child, because of the argument we gave, the execution falls into the child function. The important thing to know now that the child function is being executed is that we are already in a different name space and not all commands are going to affect the host system. So the first thing we do in this function is we try to change root into a directory called rootfs. This directory needs to be present at the runtime otherwise the command will fail. If you don't know, using cheroot means to make this directory the new root of the file system. Once that succeeds we change the directory to this new root. And finally the last thing we do is we mount the proc file system. If you've ever played around with something like uBoot, this probably looks familiar. 
If you haven't, this command basically mounts the proc directory, which is basically a file representation of various processes. Once all this is done, we just run the command we were given as arguments and that's it. Great, now let's take our version of docker for a spin. What we need before we start is the root file system of a distribution. I'm gonna pick Ubuntu, since I guess everyone is familiar with it. This website here contains the base images of Ubuntu. I'm just gonna pick the latest AMD64 one. I also made a convenience wrapper that downloads this image and here's how it looks like. What it does is it creates a temporary directory, then it checks if that directory already contains a root file system. If it doesn't, it basically just downloads and then uncompresses the Ubuntu image I showed earlier. And finally, the script cds into that temporary directory, runs the example with the bin bash as the argument. For some reason I also need to run this command as root because of proc self exe permissions or something. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not the best idea, but come on, it's just an example, who cares? When we run this script for the first time, it takes a while to download the image, but once that succeeds, we should have a working container. If I cut out the OS release file here, you can see that it looks like we're on Ubuntu. Running ps also shows us that the processes are isolated in their own namespace. And that's really it. Now let me know if you create your own alternative to docker anytime soon. I'd be glad to cover it. Thank you very much for watching till the end. Have a good day and I hope to see you again. Bye!